This tutorial is on how to operate our game clock, shot clock, scoreboard system for our home games. So, the system most likely will be turned on for you, but if you have to turn it on, we turn it on, we let it initialize, and then it's gonna come up and say installed sports, and we have only water polo. I'm not sure if you can read this on the video. It says water polo, we just hit enter, and then it comes up with a game, all right? Now you may be coming in between games. So, how do you start a new game? Well, you're gonna to go to menu, click the menu, the green menu key. It gives you a bunch of water polo settings. You're gonna to go to the one to the right, which is new game. So you hit the six key, which is a little right arrow. It says new game, you hit enter. Then it says, do you really wanna start a new game? Cause you're gonna erase the other game that you were in. And you say, yep, we're gonna erase our new game. And then it gets you set, every set, to set up, period one. You're at seven minute quarters, ready for a varsity game. But wait a minute. Sometimes you'll be operating for JV games. JV quarters are six minutes. So what you have to do is you have to edit the game time. So this is how you edit the game time. See the edit mode, the blue key here? You click on that. And so the system will say, the screen will say, well, edit what? And you go, oh, I'm gonna hit the run stop button in the upper left here. And it defaults to, it highlights the, the, the game clock time and it's blank. And then we just type in the time. You have to include tenths of a second. So for six minutes, it's six, zero, zero, zero. And then you hit enter, and bam, you're ready to go. You got, you, got the, you got the time ready to go, all right? And you also do that during the game. Let's say the officials come back to you. Can you reset the game clock to four minutes, 32 seconds? You do the same process. You go there, and you, you hit edit mode and change the time. All right, start of the game. There's a sprint before every quarter. The team sprint. You do not start the clock until... Uh, one of the players touches the ball um, to start the game. So the, the sprint goes, and blue team wins the sprint, touches the ball, you hit run, stop, right here, this, this key here. Set it, now the system's set up so that the shot clock and the game clock are all tied to this. So they're both going right now. So we're at 548 and 18 seconds on the shot clock. Now, if there's a foul, you hit the run, stop. So a foul occurs. You stop the clock. So that's when you get a whistle, you stop it. When the ball is put it back in play, so the player swims with the ball, the player fakes like they're gonna pass the ball, or, uh, the player actually makes a pass. Those all put the ball back in play and you just hit start again. The clock keeps going. Another whistle stops. Okay, you can also look at the officials, especially the good officials. They will have their arm out when they call a foul, pointing in the direction of the, who has the ball, possession. And then they drop their arm once the ball is back in play. So they blow the whistle, they point, they drop their arm. That means the clock starts going again. So you can just watch the official uh, most times, unless they're brand new. And then uh, if a shot occurs, a clear shot occurs, right? Clock's down eight seconds, seven seconds. Boom, shot. You hit reset. Hit the reset key and it gives you a new shot. Or if there's a clear a uh, change of possession, you'll simply hit the reset key. And that will handle the, the change of possession. Let's say you have an oopsie, right? Shot clock's down at 20. You kind of anticipated um, a turn, change of possessions and you hit it early. Just don't panic, hit the undo shot reset right here. And it takes you right back. So undo shot reset right here. If you accidentally hit the reset key, you just go boom. And it takes you back. All right. Um, changing time on the shot clock. So let's say the game stops, and for some reason the officials want a different amount of time on the shot clock. So they're going to say, okay, we want 15 seconds on the shot clock. All right, great. We go to edit mode. System will say, edit what? This time you hit the reset key here for the shot clock, and then it highlights the shot time. And we're gonna put 15 seconds, so it's one, five, and then zero for tenths of a second, enter. So now we're at 15 seconds on the shot clock and you're good to go. So that's all we have to do to edit the shot clocks. All right, and that's rare, but if they, if they ask us to do that, we'll do it. All right, so now, how, what do we do for score? If a team scores, um, we simply hit the plus one or minus one, but which team's which? The dark keys here are the home team, the light keys, the white keys here are the visiting team. So if the home team scores, we hit plus one. Let's say you have a happy finger, you accidentally hit it twice. 
Oops. Okay, no big deal. Just hit minus one. Cleans it up. Okay. Let's say you accidentally gave the score to the visiting team. That's okay. No big deal. Hit minus one. Score comes right off. So it's real easy to adjust the score. Um, next thing could happen. A lot of times there's ejections in water polo, right? So we're going here. The time's running. You hear tweet, tweet. You hit stop for the foul. And then who got ejected? So let's say the home team got ejected. Hit the exclusion right here for home team or the white one's exclusion for the visiting team. So we're going to exclude the home team got excluded. I click the, this key. The ball's back in play. And you do it. You'll notice the shot clock will go to 30 seconds. That's the rules of water pole. So if there's an ejection, you get a new shot clock. So the shot clock went back to 30 automatically without anyone sitting hitting reset. We keep track of the time of the ejection right here. There's 20 seconds. It's kept track right here. If you can't see it, there's a running clock there. And then once that time is up, you wave them in. You wave the person in uh, from the ejection to come back in. All right. Now, occasionally, it's rare, occasionally, sometimes you have two ejections. So let's say player one is e ejected. Pause here. Eject. New shot clock. We're running it. It's keeping track of that player. They throw the ball inside to the post, and we 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 foul another guy. Um, he's ejected. You hit pause, and then you hit ejection again. And now it keeps track of both players. So we have first player is excluded for 10 more seconds. The second player is in there excluded for 20 seconds. And you hit, hit start again. Game's going. Now let's say they score. We stop the clock. They get their goal. But now we still have the four seconds and the 15 seconds on the ejections there, which will show up on the scoreboard. So if we want to clear that, you can. So above the exclusion, you'll see exclu clear exclusion A, clear exclusion B. So I just hit those buttons, clear A, and if I had two people out, I clear B as well. And then, they, then they're taken off. If you forget to do that, no big deal. Really no big deal. It's just that that time doesn't do anything to the game. It's just um, it's nice to clean it up if you can. All right. Um, operating timeouts. So in water polo, we get three full timeouts and one 30-second timeout for our league game. So team, the clock's running, and the team calls timeout. There's 21 seconds on the shot clock. Do not reset the shot clock. That's their time they have left on the shot clock. But then they call a timeout. So now you can give them a, you got to find out, is it a partial timeout or a full timeout? The ref will tell you. If it's a, they'll say you know, partial timeout, or which is a 30 second timeout, or they'll say full timeout. Full timeouts are two minutes. So let's say it's a partial timeout for the home team. You'll hit, click this key. If it's partial for the visiting team. You click this key here. So when I click it, it automatically starts the countdown. So as soon as they tell you timeout, you know who it is, you click it, and then the time starts. So then you can tell the official when the time is up, mm -hmm. and they'll blow the whistle to, to bring everybody back and, and start play again. All right? If it's a full timeout, same thing, but then you'd have two minutes in the clock ticking down, and so you know how much time there is there for that. All right. I think that's about it. Um, wait, one more thing. Operating time between quarters so you end a quarter let me uh edit the game time here edit game time and just make it uh to enter all right so now i'm gonna hit start okay time ran out okay so to go to the next period you hit this little period key here the yellow key here period it takes you to the next uh period which has the time in between periods right so it says two minutes so then you hit start and it keeps track of the time between, at halftime, it gives you five minutes. Now, occasionally, the teams are ready to go less than five minutes, and the officials are ready to go, and they're ready to start. So if they give you that situation, and it says it's waiting for the countdown all, all the way, we simply hit stop the time, and then we hit the period, and it takes us to the next quarter right away, ready to go. So we're at the next quarter, ready to go. If it's a JV game, we do have to edit the game clock from seven minutes to six minutes again, and that's it. So. It's a nice, small system, can be operated by one person. Uh, you also have the option to team up with somebody and operate, figure out who's got what responsibilities. A classic would be let one person manage the shot clock. So they sit there and just hit the reset button and, um, and the other person does everything else or maybe they do shot clock 
and then they do the exclusion. So you guys can kind of manage who's going to do what parts. Um, but it can be just done by one person. And sometimes people might prefer to do it by themselves. It might be easier versus having somebody else as a team. So depends on your situation. But anyway, I'm hoping this is easy enough uh, that people will be able to volunteer and operate our system during our home games. Thanks for watching the video and have a great day.